is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Hello, you two. Hey. Cutie Patel. How's it going? <laughs> Just trying to annoy Jeff. How are you doing? Jeff can't be annoyed. He looks like Teflon Don right Ooh. now. <laughs> just wait a couple of yeah, seconds. Just oh, wait. you're going to be annoyed by the midterm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for leading me in, Lindsay, so beautifully. This is it. It's the last full day before the midterm elections tomorrow. And over the weekend, all the big names were out on the campaign trail. Both President Biden and former President Obama appeared together in Pennsylvania to campaign for Democratic Senate candidate John Fetterman. Meantime, former President Trump was also in Pennsylvania. That's a big state, y'all, campaigning for Republican candidate Dr. Oz. And then last night, he flew to Florida for another rally. So my first question to you all, and please write in YouTube, the app, do you think all these big names are going to make a difference this late in the game? And what do you think is going to happen in tomorrow's election? Fortune tellers, go. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's, it's so late. Like, when you think about... Um, Oprah coming out like within the last week for Doctor, Fetterman yeah. instead of Dr. Oz. It's like people were looking for that endorsement probably months ago, you know, even a year ago, like, you know, when it was just a primary candidates. And so I think it's just interesting timing, but it also is relevant, especially for Democrats who have otherwise would have Biden on the campaign trail and his approval rating is not too high. So having Obama out there and actually seeing him on the campaign trail again was classic. I can't even lie. Like, Did that you was, see the woman who's like, yeah, they you pulled out, like the, That was like the big guns. It's it just entertaining to watch. He's a obviously an amazing public speaker so it's just been an interesting but it, it really is like millions of people already early voted so it kind of is too late yeah, I yeah. agree. I, 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 I'm just never one for like even musicians going out there and like, let's rock the vote, man. It's like, I'm going to vote Jordan. for you because, rock the vote. because uh, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen came out. Oh, I'm going to change my vote. No, I, some people are influenced by that. I don't think it matters. I have my issues that I like to focus on, which Americans should focus on. It shouldn't be this bashing back and forth or I'm friends with this celebrity. I, I'm more of like, here's what's going on with the issues that I care about, Here's right? Policies. Right. And that's what I care about. You know, and that's what I'm going to vote for. It's not for so much like who's influencing me. Okay, so I totally get that. But Lindsay, I totally disagree. I think people are so fickle at this day and age that they literally don't know who there's a group of people that still don't know who they're going to vote for. And Obama and um, Oprah, I think we're told do it at the very last second for name recognition and for people's attention span. Well, yeah, I think people are fickle because if you let's say if you have an option between changing everything that as far as taxes and all the conservative things you want to vote for or voting for somebody who's crazy who won't even admit the last election was actually a real election and the results are valid. I think that you have a balance and so you might be fickle because you're like how did this candidate even get on the ballot right right so I think people are still there and we've talked in, in, in length about how the candidate actually did get there but I think there's gonna be some correcting and we'll see like a lot of the races are really really tight They're the ones that will de tight. determine like Georgia Nevada Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania these are all like tooth and nail and some people are like well how can it possibly be it's because some people are just stuck to where they are so some people are just committed to like okay I'm on this side I'm on this side well, that, this, and I'm staying firm this leads me to this is such a good but you are helping me so much today thank you here's a question for you do you think that a candidate's morals really matter anymore so what Lindsay's saying like how they got there I'm asking because it seems like this election more than any other the character of a candidate just doesn't seem to be swaying voters much like Miss Granger was saying Miss Granger, mm -hmm. whoa. It, yeah. Here's some <laughs> examples. First, there's more than 300 election deniers running for office, and a lot of them look like they're going to win. Then there's this stuff that came out about Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker about his alleged lies, but he could still win tomorrow. So we're going to put this to you. What do you think, DBL Nation? Does a candidate's morals or character matter to voters, yes or no? Does it matter if your anchor's hair keeps hitting the microphone? I can hear it. I know. <laughs> to the left. Okay, Steve says to the center. I apologize. All right. See, everything with you is to the left. <laughs> <laughs> everything I Good own. One, in a bus all right. All right. Left. Trying to get right? some jokes out there. That was what was so? Does Do you think it more, matters anymore? It does to me, right? It does to me. That's something that I would look for in a leadership. You know, like you just said, Obama. His the way he orates, the way he conducts himself is something I want in a leader. But I think we're at a point now and it's kind of that Trump effect right 
everyone's like, I don't even care where this guy came from. I'm voting for that side because I don't like this side. Mm. So I don't even know if character matters because people are so tired of the left or they're so tired of the right. They're just voting the opposite and they don't care about the character anymore because they're so tired of things getting jammed down their throat by the opposing side. I could not agree with you more. I don't think it matters about anymore. the left thing. No, oh. <laughs> about what you said. I think you're absolutely right. Lindsay, do you agree that it just does it? I'm voting for the party. It doesn't matter if it's a bag of sand, some seaweed and a partridge in a pear tree, which I think we have well, a couple no, of we those. have a couple of yeah. those running. Well, I think that truth matters. Integrity matters. Morals matter to me specifically. I can't speak to all the voters, but when you look at the recent Washington Post ABC News poll, it says that people are specifically looking one step ahead of them. So they're wondering, what is my wallet telling me? What are the grocery prices telling me? And so they're looking at the economy. And so they're going out there and voting for these things. There's also the biggest issue of abortion. People are voting for that. But if you talk about like Nevada that we were just saying, that is already codified in that state. So they don't have to fight to see if they can have a baby or not, or if they must have a baby or not. And so they're voting on the economy. And so when you probably see a conservative win in that state, then you're going to understand why it was just about the other issues and not so much did the candidates say, okay, I'm not looking at the last election. I'm going to kind of take support from President Trump because people are like on the fence. Like, you know, even um, Dr. Oz is kind of like on the fence, like with Trump. And then he's like getting support from Trump. So you see people playing this game because it's kind of like if you ostracize President Trump at this point, you're definitely going to lose. But do you think you can do what with his um, support? Do you think you can actually get some things done? That's a conversation that people need to have, because if I was running, I would just like say I'm not going to associate with that. But then also you have Liz Cheney, who just completely didn't even win her primary. And that's kind of the outcome. Sometimes. It's like the sacrifice of what you do, right? Risk versus re reward. Man, do I wish we voted on character. But I don't think polit I think somewhat and you're going to like this, Jeff. I think politicians are somewhat innately a little slimy. I think Democrats and Republicans, if you look back without social media, have done really slimy things. But now we're getting to a point in which the two plus two equals four for half the country and two plus two equals five for the other half. That's where I'm confused where it doesn't matter about character anymore. And I'm terrified because they just want someone sitting in the seat. They don't care at all about their values. And when you are in Congress, you hold real power. You hold real power for real people's lives. And if you don't have a moral compass and they don't care or people don't care, then what's the point of the politician? Well, everyone thinks the way you do and say that all politicians don't have, really have a moral compass, right? And so everybody's slimy. So this one went too far by denying the election, right? But some people are probably like, okay, so I'm thinking that all politicians suck. Who's going to put the policies in place that I want them to enact? And so maybe that's why some people are still going to the polls for people that you would think like, hey, this guy's not showing any moral fiber, but they're like, okay, but he's going to put these three policies in place. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what that. Jeff was saying. It's just a sacrifice of like what James Clyburn, a representative, said today. He's like, I've studied history, I know history, and we are saving democracy this year or not. That is what's going on. That's what's on the ballot. So I just want people, whatever they vote for, just remember that morality matters, even though we don't think people are caring anymore. Let's take a look. Does a candidate's morals or character matter to voters? 79% of you say yes. Good for you. Good for you. 21% of you say no. That's good to hear. Coming up on DBL, our interview with 80s pop icon Debbie Gibson. She's telling us all about her holiday album. And Elon Musk is targeting impersonators on Twitter after getting trolled by celebrities. We're going to talk about it coming up next. There's going to be a lot of internet chatter. Mm -hmm. That's where the red flag goes up. We are never going really? to agree on this. No. It's ignorant. And for me, it was just like a damn shame. You tell me I need to do something. I'm going to do the exact opposite. You know why I don't call in sick? Camera hog. About you. All right, we're fixing Tori's microphone issue. We didn't get to the other story. Let's talk about these text messages. Please. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I don't want to lead in, Tori. You take it away. <laughs> are, you are, we still getting, on? are you getting a lot of text messages from <laughs> voters? <laughs> yes, but guess what? That's how people relate these days. That's that was how a very no, I think relatable intro. Oh, no, the, the thing was, I'm, I'm getting an obnoxious no. amount of text messages. I that think look everybody like, is. Yeah. yeah, everyone. It looked like numbers that I grew up next to, you know, like the same area code that I have. So I'm like, oh, let me check this out. And then it's like, oh, scam. And not even scam, but like jamming down my throat. Like I see all the commercials. I watch the news every day. Do you actually read the text messages? Yeah, to see like what, <laughs> like what bill or what proposition they want me to take a look at. Because at that point, if I haven't known about the proposition, oh, like election I don't day's already all. here. Yeah. And that's all on your ballot, obviously. But you know. I just been getting, I've been getting, hey, Jeffrey, like, Jeffrey. Yeah, hey Victoria. So I'm like, whoa, so I'm like, what's that all about? So I thought I was like, Perfect. maybe someone from the past, you yeah, know? I was like, Jeffrey. And then you open it up. And it was political, and I'm like, delete, block. And now I just block. see. Block, I don't block. I just see, hey Jeffrey, yeah, delete, block, delete, block. Oh my God, Yeah, I block everybody. 
I need to start blocking them. I, guess. I don't but read I anything. But I thought they would stop after tomorrow. Yeah, you think yeah, I'm going to be else, influenced by a spam message? Somebody no, but, sent me okay, because I got five hours off at Kohl's. Some of those commercials are effective. So like they'll be like, your kids need books in school. Okay. Vote for a prop. And oh, I'm like, dang, I'm going to check I don't this know. out. That does so influence some people. Look, no, I mean, I would look more into it. It's like, all garbage. They're like though. digging into like the we'll pit have, um, and like, I don't know. I don't like all those political ads bashing each other. It's not for me. Yeah, yeah they, they do. Uh... Yeah, they dig in. You know what I mean? He's not a family man. He's here to steal your been, money. Yeah, I'm, I was trying to say they Some haven't been that bad this season, but they pretty much. The Willie Port Yeah, they're, they're bad. Out. They're bad. I can't stand them. But I think, unfortunately, we're just going to get more and more because it's like it used to be the newspaper and then, like, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Good one. <laughs> yeah, good story, bro. <laughs> Today's Sandals Word of the Day is Daiquiri. Daiquiri. I want a daiquiri right now. By the way, I didn't know that's how you spelled daiquiri. Yeah, I would have lost that in the spelling bee also. Okay, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Welcome back to DBL. That was the word of the day, and you need it for your chance to win a luxury trip to Curacao. Go to dailyblastlive.com slash sandals to enter, and don't forget to watch every day for more chances to win. All right, more celebrities are coming after. New Twitter owner Elon Musk. Valerie Bertinelli changed her name on Twitter to Elon Musk. She did it to prove his idea of charging $8 to verify your account is flawed. She tweeted the blue check mark simply meant your identity was verified. Scammers would have a harder time impersonating you. That no longer applies. Good luck out there. Kathy Griffin also impersonated Musk on the site, but he ended up suspending her account. Musk joked he suspended her account for impersonating a comedian, but said she could get her account back if she paid $8. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy responded, I feel like I'm talking about like this an eighth so grade childish. fight, okay? <laughs> Kathy responded with a note telling him he likes Bryant. No, I'm kidding. Uh, from her late mother's account saying, quote, I mean, you stole that joke, you bleep. Look, please do a better job running this company. It used to mean something. This is KG, by the way. So then Elon clarified that any account that does not clearly state it's a parody will be permanently suspended. So what do you guys think of this? And the point the stars are trying. Can I be honest here? I feel like if you are going to run a forty-four billion dollar company, you should have had like somewhat of a plan. I feel like we're looking at Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, being like twelve dollars, eight dollars, blue check, moo check, moo Chocolate check. Factory. Like none of this is none of this is standard. You're firing people on a whim. You're re, now they're. I'm gonna say they're rehired they're maybe some of them. Rehiring some of these people on a whim. This is these are people's lives. And if it's the town square of America, you are just willy nilly doing crazy blank stuff with it and I'm a little bit concerned. I was first last week I was arguing with you that no he knows what he's doing he's a billionaire he has some business acumen uh, I think he's good but this is a little bit ridiculous because I understand that he doesn't want people impersonating people he doesn't like bots and all that stuff he's been very clear about that but it seems like bother me you get him blocked it seems like very that's the standard approach for Twitter right now it's like get on Elon Musk's nerves and something bad happens to you I'm sure the people he fired some of them he didn't like that they like banned Trump or whatever they did and so he seems like he's on a personal thing that's not anything to do with business but also if you have the money to own that company you're allowed to run it your way and people shouldn't have been abruptly fired but they should exit stage left knowing that that is not somebody you want to work under yeah. What do you think, Jeff? I think we're I think using the word celebrities and stars pretty loosely these days. Ooh. Those are our two examples of people clapping back. I don't know. Listen, he just <laughs> he just got the company, right? There's going to be some things that people don't like, people th things that people do like. I think it's going to take some time, right? Here's my advice to you. Don't go on Twitter. Right, I'm not. Don't use it. Right. I haven't used my Twitter account in years because right. it was vile back then. I don't know why it's going to change now. It's a disgusting place. People are 
outraged about everything, and it's not a place I want to live my life in. So if you are outraged about Elon Musk owning Twitter, get off of it. Log off. You know what hurts him? Logging off. You know what helps him? Building controversy and having more people join. Totally That's agree. what helps. Totally agree with you. But may I add that Twitter was, for some people, a real space of political discussion and debate. Who has a real discussion about politics in this day and age on any platform? I think it's come to that. I, I think, think 10 years ago it was yeah, a good space for that. Now, yeah. Yeah. you say it one thing, like I'm taking my kid out for yeah. a shopping trip. They're like, ah, shopping? Da! You know, yeah, people are just right. crazy. And we're about to see Elon do a somersault into a chocolate pool. We'll be right back. Good one. Right? No. <laughs> okay. The federal government currently pays for COVID shots for all Americans, regardless of health insurance status. But that is expected to end soon. And recently, people on social media have claimed that Pfizer is planning to raise the cost of its COVID shot by 400%. But is that true? Let's verify. Our sources are Angela Lucan, Pfizer's U.S. President, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Kaiser Family Foundation. In June 2022, HHS purchased 105 million doses of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for $3.2 billion. Right now, Americans can get one of those vaccines for free. But for the federal government to continue covering the cost of COVID-19 vaccines, Congress would need to approve additional funding. And that hasn't happened yet. So once the government supply runs out, the manufacturing, procurement, and pricing of the vaccines will transition to the private sector, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. This is a common practice for many pharmaceutical products, and it usually results in a higher price of the product. In Pfizer's case, they say the vaccine price will increase from $30 per dose, which is what the government paid, to anywhere between $110 and $130. That is a 400% jump. Pfizer's U.S. President Angela Lucan said the higher price point is because of the higher cost related to switching from multiple dose vials to individually packaged doses and commercial distribution. Americans with private or government insurance, such as Medicare or Medicaid, should still be able to get the vaccine for free, according to Pfizer. People without insurance, however, might have a harder time finding free shots. So we can verify, yes, Pfizer is planning to increase the cost of its COVID-19 vaccine by as much as 400%, but people with insurance will likely still be able to receive the vaccine for free. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Dachshunds. Welcome back to DBL. That was Christmas Star from Debbie Gibson's new holiday album. The pop star has been in the music industry for over 30 years, but can you believe this is her first holiday album? We spoke with Debbie earlier. Take a look. Okay, so you recently posted a video with the caption, Dance Like No One Is Watching. Is dancing one of your secrets to looking so young? Because you look the same. Amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you. Listen, I jokingly say I'm either taking on the world or I'm taking a nap. Nice. So I dance hard, I nap hard, and I dance when I feel like life is getting too serious or I'm taking myself too seriously. Like I take my work seriously because that's what I put forth out in the world and people pay money to buy my music. It's my shows, I want it to be great. But there's a difference between taking that seriously and yourself seriously. Mm -hmm. So I kind of dance to shake that off and uh, yeah, I do like bad interpretive dancing for my dogs and they kind of roll their <laughs> eyes at me like, mom. <laughs> Where I have to film them sometime when I'm dancing for them because they are truly my, my boys. They're just like, really mom? Again? <laughs> uh, you sing with your dad. I, I can't imagine as, oh, as, as, as a girl dad myself, I can't imagine how great that was. So can you tell us about that? I'm going to cry right now. I just spoke to my Feel dad free. before I am talking to you guys here. And we've been singing together since I could start to form sentences as a, like a baby. And my dad has this unbelievable, natural, untrained voice that I feel the world needs to hear. And I, I'm, you know, he's pushing 80 and I'm so proud of him that he was bold enough to actually go into the studio and record. And I'm so honored that I have this cherished memory forever. Yeah. You know, it's just so, so special. I lost my mom earlier this year Aww. and my mom Mom was always also encouraging my dad to sing because you know she was she was a manager so she was like Joe what are we how are we going to capitalize.
guys on this voice. <laughs> and he was like, you know what? Deb can have the showbiz craziness. I just want to like work for TWA and keep keep a steady paycheck coming home for my family, which is what he did, which is so noble. And my dad just sang for fun. I dragged him into community theater with me and got him in the studio for real this year. And it's so magical. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. We have a mutual friend, Bob, and I'm supposed to rub my ear. I think we didn't come up with anything yes, funny. We didn't come up with Eric. He yeah, we didn't come me. up with anything funny though. He sent me a picture of you with like some other people. I'm like, I can't use that on the show. To rub your ear? <laughs> no, I just did that for him. We were. It, she knows what I'm talking about. Anyways, he's a great guy, mutual he, friend. Yeah, he'll love amazing. this. My producers, <laughs> not so much. All right, so you also sing with Joey McIntyre on the album, and you two have known each other since you were teenagers. What did you think when you first met him, and was he in New Kids on the Block at the time? Yeah, so we met backstage at the New Kids concert at Westbury Music Fair, and we joked that Joe looked like he was 12, <laughs> even though he was like 15 and I was 17. But you know, at that age, like sophomore and senior, like he thought I was this cool senior girl. Uh, and I was like, oh, what a cute little boy. <laughs> and then when we played Vegas together last year, we, I was like, wait, we're like practically the same age? Because he's turning 50 this year, I'm 52. At this point, it's all the same. But yeah, we always remembered that first meeting and we met throughout the years, but we really became close in doing our duet of Lost in Your Eyes on the mixtape tour, which was his brilliant idea, then recording it, then playing Vegas together. And now we co-wrote Heartbreak Holiday for the Winterlicious album. He's quite a songwriter. And we just have this incredible friendship and professional chemistry and creativity that is such an amazing gift in this chapter of my life. Because I've always been a solo show. I've never had a partner. He's got the four guys, but as he likes to say, he's very in touch with his feminine side. So having a female creative counterpart is fun for him too. And we're like pop soulmates. That's what we have dubbed each other. So Al likes to listen really to Al likes to listen to Win Winterlicious and on, on vinyl in the morning. I do. Uh, first, I was going to say, I am going to hit you up. I'd like a signed copy of the album. I'm just saying now. <laughs> what? Uh, I would like, I'm going to right. ask her right for now. Yes. Copy the album. Look. <gasps> yeah, see? It's no. also got this like bonus 45. Oh, that's great. Because I can you. fit all the music Can you put on yes. the <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing what you guys are saying. What did I miss? That All sounded good. Names, Al was being very I, selfish and said, could you sign an album for him? And then I said, how about all of our names? Yeah, we wanted all of them. Haters. I just happen to have a few extra. You will all get a copy. And Debbie, we got to run. We will reach out for that album, yes, 100%. Oh, yes. <laughs> the DBL Nation, make sure to put Debbie's new album, Winterlicious, on your holiday playlist yes. and check out if Debbie's tour is coming yes, to your yes, city. Yes. Visit her website, DebbieGibsonOfficial.com. Debbie, thank you so You're much. Amazing. Let's take a listen to Jingle Those Bells while we go to break. Ooh. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, churches have one of the best deals on federal taxes. They neither have to pay them nor file annual paperwork. But a tweet with 10,000 likes claims they can lose their tax-exempt status by backing a political candidate. So let's verify. Can the IRS revoke the tax-exempt status of churches that endorse candidates? Our sources are the IRS, the Johnson Amendment of 1954, Clergy Financial Resources, the United Church of Christ, the California Catholic Conference, and Grace Communion International. In 1954, Congress passed the Johnson Amendment, which prohibits churches, charities, and most other tax-exempt organizations from endorsing candidates. If they do, then they risk losing their tax-exempt status. The IRS says generally these organizations can't show preference for a candidate, but a leader can, if it's clear they're speaking as an individual. This means they can't use official titles or church resources like the pulpit, newsletter, or website to make their endorsement. Our sources note politicians can speak to congregants, but all candidates must be given the same opportunity. So yes, the IRS can revoke the tax-exempt status of churches that endorse candidates, although it's a lengthy process, and the only time the IRS successfully revoked a church's tax-exempt status was in 1992, when Branch Ministries sponsored newspaper ads urging Christians not to vote for Bill Clinton. 
The United Church of Christ and the IRS note under the rules, churches are allowed to take positions on public policy issues such as abortion or immigration without endorsing specific candidates. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. As doctors gear up for flu and cold season, this fall doctors are seeing an increase in RSV cases. And though the respiratory illness is usually found in infants and children, many are wondering, can adults get RSV? Let's verify. Our sources, Novon Health Infectious Disease Dr. David Priest and family physician Dr. Carla Robinson. Though it's typically found in the younger population, Dr. Robinson says adults can get the virus. Adults can get RSV and commonly get RSV, and it's usually a very mild illness. Dr. Priest says this was only discovered a few years ago when hospitals began testing for it. But a number of years ago, as we got better um, diagnostic tests in the hospital, we began to discover that RSV was not just a disease of children, but a disease of adults, particularly the elderly or adults that live in, in skilled nursing facilities. Both doctors say it is mild in healthy adults. Those who have ailments get it much worse. And so these are your individuals that are older or who may have compromised immune systems or who have chronic disease. RSV inflames airways in the lungs. That's why both doctors say it's dangerous for little kids and older adults or people with ailments. So we can verify that, yes, adults can get RSV. Both the doctors advise you continue to wash your hands and stay home if you're feeling sick because it's that time of the year when respiratory illnesses start to spread. With your Verify, I'm Megan Bragg. Jeff just got a text from please vote for me. Welcome back for all the wine lovers out there. Today is International Merlot Day. Yes. They love the taste of wine, but your teeth, they don't love the stain it leaves behind. So thanks to Smile Actives, you can enjoy your wine, coffee, tea without worrying how it will impact your smile. Smile Actives new pro whitening gel removes the stains from your favorite drinks that they leave behind and gives you a brighter, whiter smile in days. Smile Actives is super easy to use. Just add the pro whitening gel to your toothpaste and every time you brush your teeth, you're using it. No change to your routine, no messy strips, trays, or expensive trips to the dentist. In a clinical study, user said at about an average eight shade improvement after using the gel for just 30 days. So order today for a special buy one, get one free offer. Don't wait to get your brighter, whiter smile. Visit smileactives.com today. Now I'm very weirded out about my smile. I'm okay. Before we go, who's <laughs> ready to be a billionaire? Woo! Not you, Jeff? I am. Oh, okay. There's enough hooting going on. I knew it. Yeah. I knew too much hooting. <laughs> yeah, too much. No one won the Powerball jackpot over the weekend, which means one lucky person could win the record-breaking $1.9 billion jackpot. The drawing is tonight. Um, Michael Dean, my producer, wants to make it clear, though, that the cash out option makes you a millionaire, not a billionaire. It's $929.1 million. You know, I say you got way better chances of signing up for our free vacation to Curacao. <laughs> I'm, I'm 1,000% serious so right. on that. You're not going to win unless you sign up. Sign up for that, and you have a legit good chance to win. Maybe you should get a job at Sandals instead of this. Bye, guys. I would love Sandals. <laughs> free trips. <laughs>